A washing machine isn't something you'd normally show off, but people who own a Mila often do. It takes better care of the fabrics, plus uh, the durability of the machine is longer. And if you have a product that lasts for 20 years, you know exactly what it does, you're used to it, and you're happy with it. And that is very important today. Mila is the third largest household manufacturer in the world. It has grown with the times, creating appliances that have made domestic life easier throughout the 20th century, especially for women. Their new line of washers also makes life easier for your clothes. The Series 1000, with its patented drum design, gets your clothes clean without the usual wear and tear. You like what you put in there. I mean, ladies, and we men, to be honest as well, have our favorite shirts, favorite things, and we do not want to see them in a different manner after washing than before. More than 100 years of research and highly secretive patents go into making this washer. The specialty of that machine is the honeycomb drum in combination with the electronic programs. But this machine started out about as low-tech as you can get. Mila began with a butter churn, its first product more than 100 years ago. The creation of Carl Mila, who owned a farm equipment store, and Reinhard Zinken, a talented salesman. It is their great-grandsons who still run the company today. This was no ordinary butter churn. Made of fine quality oak and wrought iron, it was a hit with the local dairy farmers. Butter churns uh, broke quite frequently down on the farms in Westphalia here in Germany. And the problem was then to repair it or get a new one and so on. So longer lasting butter churns meant a lot of uh, ease for uh, the farmers there. It was the action of the butter churn that inspired a groundbreaking idea. In 1901, just one year later, Miele introduced its first clothes washer. The concept of a washing machine is very similar to a butter churn. It's actually a wooden tub and something moving inside. But the first washing machine does look quite different from what we expect now as a washing machine, of course. Miele kept improving their washers, from models with external motors to electric washers with optional ringers and the first enameled tub. Then, 1958 heralded the era of the fully automatic washer. For the first time, dirty clothes went in and clean clothes came out, untouched by human hands. I sometimes say we did more for women's liberation than any law in the world. You must try to imagine that the wash or the clothes were put into hot water and then it was rubbed by hand. And then it was uh, dried uh, by the sun. And that was really hard work. When the company started more than a century ago, Mila had only 11 employees. Today, this family-run company employs more than 16,000 people worldwide. You know, we have got many employees who work for us now, as I do, or my partner does, in the fourth or fifth generation. We have many families who work for us, who did work for us, so there is a close relation and there is a close link towards the family, towards the product, towards the, the brand and everything. Their forge is still located in Gutterslow, Germany. Every day they melt 1,200 tons of iron into big cauldrons. Here, they're making what's called the bearing cross. It acts as a counterweight in the washer, holding it steady during aggressive spin cycles. The bearing cross is very important to compensate the centrifugal forces of the whole washing machine. The liquid iron is poured into sand molds, which are filled every 15 seconds without interruption throughout the day. The process of working with iron hasn't really changed in a hundred years. Now it's on to Miele's high-tech assembly line, where everything comes together. In this part of the factory, a huge spool of steel is threaded into an enormous punch press, which cuts out the basic panel shapes, making holes for the front-loading door. The front panels uh, are made on huge presses with a force of about 1,250 tons. The whole process is fully automated. Each day they go through 300 tons of steel to produce an astonishing 4,200 washers a day. The steel panels are dipped into an electrically charged bath for cleaning, then into an acidic bath which hardens them. 
They're then coated with nickel in preparation for the enamel coating. It's made of glass powder that's been melted and fused. After it's been applied, it bakes in an oven. This uh, enameling process uh, guarantees that we will not get any corrosion at the front panels. The washer is made up of two drums made from stainless steel. First, the outer drum is produced. It will house the all-important inner drum with its patented honeycomb design. It's an ingenious invention and the key reason why your delicates are safe in this washer. The honeycomb drum is a drum that makes by its structure the fabrics lie on a slight film of water so they do not get in touch with the rough metal. The drum has to be rugged enough for aggressive spin cycles, yet safe enough for expensive fabrics. Like we have a program for uh, wool, like cashmere, a silk program. I think they really, when they are uh, from special brands, cost a lot of money. If you fill the washing machine, what is in is worth much more than the machine itself. Next, motors are attached to the drums, which are then sent floating through the air to the main assembly area. On this assembly line, drums are married to their chassis, and many busy hands do the work of connecting front and side panels, electrical components, and detergent trays. Mila puts each washer through the ringer, so to speak. There's a quality control test at every step along the way. Every washing machine which leaves the assembly line here in Gütersloh uh, has to be tested. If there is um, a failure, for example, it will not get to the customer. A machine called the Octopus wraps each finished washer in protective packaging. The shipping label goes on, then metal straps hold everything in place. It seems the good washers, those that have passed all their tests, go to washer heaven, or at least to shipping, so they can glam up the laundry rooms of stylish people everywhere. Good design, it seems, can improve with age. So how would a great-grandfather feel to know that his is now a household name and sold in 80 countries around the world? On the first washing machines, he put uh, the words, an international brand. We were definitely not exporting, but if you now look at the company, now you could say we are an international brand. I think he would be very delighted.